So here it says calculate the sum of these series. What do those dots mean there? That there's extra terms in between there that we don't know. So there's more than just the four terms that we see. What do we know? Well, it's geometric, so that means there's going to be an R value. Do we know what that R value is? Five. We're multiplying by five. Again, if you can't see it, sometimes it's easy to see it because the numbers are nice for mental math. Three times five is 15. That's not so bad. But if you can't see it right away and it's told to you that it is geometric, you can always take two in a row and divide them. You get five. If you took 75 and 15, those are two in a row, and divide them, you get five. And that's why it's called a common ratio. So we got r is five. We want to calculate the sum, so we think about our sum formula. For this formula, we need r, we need term one, and we need n. Those are the things that are on the right-hand side of the formula in order to figure it out. We've got R. R is 5. Do we know term 1? Yes. Term 1 is negative 3. Do we know how many terms there are? No. So before we can use this formula, we realize that we don't know N. So we need... to find n first. So we go back to our other formulas. Because it's geometric, the other formula that we have for geometric series and sequences is the general term. Tn is equal to T1 r to the n minus 1. And if we could figure out what term number this last term is, we would find out how many terms are in the sequence. So in this case, we know term 1, it's negative 3. We know r, it's 5, power n minus 1. And on this side, we know that our last term is negative 46,000. Oh, term 1 is negative 3, sorry. Yeah, I've got that, negative 3. We know that our last term is negative 46,875. So if we divide both sides by 3, we get 15,625 equals 5n minus 1. And then, do we remember what we did from here? did one of these questions in 1.3. What did we do for the next step? Okay. Hmm? Close. You're, you're one step past. Well, we can't just divide by 5 because this is an exponent here. We can't you can't really go an n minus 1 root of both sides. That's, that would be what you would do if, the, if this was 5 cubed or x cubed, you'd cube root it. But now we have a problem that that n is in the exponent. And I said it was something you weren't going to like. Well, yeah, we've got to get the bases the same and guess and check. So we go to our calculator and we figure out 5 to the power of and we try one. 5 to the power, 7. Someone says 7. Too big. 5 to the power, 5 to the power 6. Yes, it works. 5 to the power 6. So once you get them the same base, now it's easy to see if 6 is equal to n minus 1, n has to be 7. So we did all of this to find n first, because now when we look, what were we originally trying to find? We were trying to find the sum 
and we knew term 1, and we knew r, but we didn't know n. Well, now we can say, oh, look at that. It's 7. Worked out just perfectly. So now we know that n is 7. Now we can use this formula and plug things in. So I'll go to the bottom here. I'll draw another line to say we're going back to this formula. We're going to find the sum of the first seven terms. We knew term 1 was negative 5. 1 minus, no, term 1 was negative 3, right? Term 1 was negative 3. 1 minus 5 to the 7 over 1 minus Again, this is a nice place where if you have that fraction button on your calculator, write it as a fraction. On the top, you have negative 3 bracket 1 minus 5 to the power 7 divided by 1 minus 5. Push enter. Negative 58,593. So the sum of that sequence, negative 58,593. Question you can do after this one is number 9. We're going to do example 4, and then I'll give you some time to work on these, and we will start 1.5 today as well.